He's with this group hey, good afternoon, everybody. I think we'll call this meeting to order. I always feel a little bit strange uh, as a visitor to Fargo, uh, uh, hosting the meeting here in, the, in City Hall, but um, it turns out that we, the Corps of Engineers, are the ones who uh, asked for this meeting, so I guess that uh, makes it appropriate for me to host. So I will offer first a, a very gracious thanks to Mayor Mahoney and all the city commissioners here for, for having us today. And it's always uh, a pleasure to be up in the Fargo-Moorhead metro region. And of course, um, you guys are experiencing a little bit of a flood today. We have uh, with us today Lieutenant General Todd Seminite, who's the Chief of Engineers. So he's uh, in charge of the total engineer force for the United States Army, all components, so the Reserve, the Guard, and the active duty. Um, but more importantly, today, he's in charge of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And so um, bringing him up to speed on the latest on this project and having his uh, support as we go forward is critical to our success. And so uh, we just uh, propose to uh, have a discussion today with the Diversion Authority and uh, get some people's perspectives. Um, encourage you to ask me or General Seminite uh, tough questions or raise tough issues, because those are the kinds of things that we like to deal with uh, sooner rather than later, so we can get moving with the project. So I think um, maybe the maybe a first thing we should do is go around the table and make some introductions. And we do have a short agenda. It's uh, five minutes before three, I see, and we ha we're here till 3.45, so we've got uh, relatively uh, short amount of time. We'll have some uh, remarks from some of the leadership at the table and then open it up for, for discussion um, 10 minutes from now or so. And so with that, maybe I'll just ask the people at the, the head table here to, make, uh, to introduce themselves quickly. Sure, Kevin Campbell, Clay County Commissioner and Vice Chair of the Diversion Authority. Kevin Wilson, I'm the Deputy at the St. Paul District of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Hi, Terry Williams, Program Manager, Corps of Engineers. Bernie Dardis, Mayor of the City of West Fargo, and also one of the members of the business leaders. Rick Steen, Cass County Commission, and a member of the Diversion Authority as well. Dave Pepcorn, Fargo City Commissioner and Diversion Board member. Mike Thorsted, West Fargo City Commission and Diversion Board member. Chuck Hendrickson, Mart City Council and Diversion Authority member. Uh, Tim Mahoney, Mayor of Fargo, and I'm glad the general went down and looked at our project here next to City Hall. We had one of the top 10 floods we've had in this, uh, this year, 3505, and uh, everything worked slick. We didn't have any major leak. I was going to have the senator come by and put a finger in there, but we didn't <laughs> have one. <laughs> John Hovind, Senator. Yeah, Todd Semini, Chief of Engineers, and I look forward to making some comments in a minute. <laughs> Mary Sherling, Chair of the Cass County Commission and Chair of the Diversion Party. All right, so just um, by, thanks everybody. Um, so just for general Seminite's sake, the, the um, Diversion Board of Authority, sometimes abbreviated to DA or the non-federal sponsors in core speak, uh, really are a, a world-class group of individuals and a world-class team supporting this project. They uh, have a whole lot of skin in the game. Again, as we see the, the flood that uh, is, is a so-called minor flood today, but really has some significant impacts uh, on the surrounding com communities. I mentioned Fargo and Moorhead, but there's also Cass and Clay counties on either side of uh, the Red River, and then the city of, uh, of West Fargo, a couple representatives, including the mayor uh, here today, which is uh, a critical part of this team as well. Um, so we really do, uh, at, every once in a while, somebody, um, at maybe Mississippi Valley Division headquarters will, will say, hey, have you run a model on this? And I say, no, we haven't, but the non-federal sponsors have. And they say, well, wait a minute, they have hydrologists or they have, uh, you, you can fill in the blank with uh, you know, a capability. They have cost estimators? And I say, uh, yeah, they have all that and then more. I mean, so this is a really well-resourced team that is uh, truly committed to not just solving the, the uh, flooding problem in this region, but to doing it in creative ways uh, thinking outside the box and finding uh, efficiencies to to produce the project um, more quickly than traditional delivery uh, methods would do, and also at uh, lower costs. Um, just a little bit more by way of background, the, the project uh, was on hold for almost two years based on an injunction um, in federal court, but the great news I think everybody in this room is aware of is that uh, last Friday we got an order from the judge um, allowing us to do significant work uh, underneath that injunction. Um, any, basically any work in North Dakota that's not gonna affect the uh, waters of Minnesota. 
and that allows us to do a lot. So as of, um, let's see, it was two Fridays ago that we got that injunction uh, modification. But as of last Friday, uh, the Corps of Engineers was able to uh, restart the construction contract for the diversion inlet. And so while you probably won't see heavy equipment out there for uh, a month or two as we mobilize or as the construction contractor mobilizes, um, they are getting back to work and uh, the, the gears are starting to turn on that. We'll, we'll see some uh, significant work going on as soon as the weather permits. All right, so uh, for those who don't have a copy of the agenda, um, we are set to have introductions uh, or sorry, opening statements by Commissioner Sherling, by Senator Hoven, and by Lieutenant General Seminite. So we will start those with Commissioner Sherling. Well, thank you, Colonel, and uh, thank you so much, General, for joining us today and, and for your cooperation with this project. We are truly uh, thrilled to get going on it again. Also, thank you, Colonel, for being here, and Terry and Kevin and the rest of your staff really appreciate the great working relationship we've had with the Corps of Engineers uh, on this project. And we're, we're excited to go forward now and, and complete this project that we obviously need so, so dearly. So I um, would also like to thank Senator Hoven for, for joining us today. Uh, we've been diligently working with our state legislators in, in Bismarck uh, to get the, the additional funding that we need on top of the federal commitment that we've already received, and, and you have been instrumental in that. We really, really appreciate all of your efforts. Uh, the one final piece of that puzzle will, will be a loan, and uh, I know you're working very, very hard on, on getting us uh, WIPIA funding also, and, and that, that could really be instrumental in, in saving taxpayers a phenomenal amount of money on this project. So we really appreciate all, all you do in, in D.C. for us. It's, um, it's really been impressive, the work that you've done and what we've all accomplished together so far. Uh, as, as the Colonel mentioned, we've uh, been undergoing a flood here for the past few weeks and getting ready for that. Uh, things look pretty buttoned up in Fargo, but um, they really dodged a bullet here, uh, as they seem to do over and over again. Uh, but still, 35 feet is a significant flood. In rural Cass County, that meant a lot of overland flooding, and uh, we had a lot of sleepless nights for our staff out there, especially uh, northwest of the, of the metro area and the Harwood area. There are a couple thousand people that live there, several hundred homes. Uh, they were, you know, trying to careen sandbags down gravel roads on trucks in the middle of the night in cold weather and deep, uh, deep ditches filled with water. So it was very treacherous. Um, no one was injured, uh, which is the good news. There were some flooded basements, but the even better news is that 80 to 90 percent of that area will be protected with this project. And uh, we can't lose sight of that, how important that is. So um, as, as the Colonel also mentioned, that injunction was modified a couple weeks ago. And we are, we are ready to roll up our sleeves and get moving with this project. So welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks to the staff and to the rest of the board members as well. Thank you, Commissioner. I think Senator Hoven is up next. Uh, Thanks, Colonel. And I want to thank General Seminite for being here. This is really a chance for him to get out and see the progress that's been made to date. We were out um, getting around and seeing some of it, and we'll get a chance to see uh, more of it later. And, and it's remarkable all the work that, that has been done. And so, you know, that's fantastic. Uh, but um, either later today or tomorrow morning, we're going to get a chance to see some other areas within the flood project that are flooded this year that won't be when the project's completed. And it's important that you see that and, again, recognize that we still have flooding. Uh, there's a lot of folks that had to do sandbagging and other work uh, that's a hardship for them this year <clears throat> that they won't have to do once this is, is fully built. So, again, this is about comprehensive flood protection for the region. And, and I think that's where you all have really, I mean, for uh, Fargo, Moorhead, Cass County, Clay County, and the whole area, West Fargo, um, the whole area, the way you've come together, come together to do this is incredibly uh, important 
because it is about having flood protection for the region. And we have to keep remembering that, and we have to, even as we look here and see how well this flood protection, and believe me, the, the general describes himself as a muddy boots guy, and he is, we were uh, in Minot, because he said, uh, thank you, general, he signed a chief's report for flood protection in Minot today, thank you for that. Uh, but we were out climbing around uh, the, uh, the Suris River in, in the Minot area, and, and then he was here climbing on a lot of your what you've already done, and, and he can tell you what he thinks, but I think he was pretty impressed. Of course, any anytime you come up on any control structure, he goes, does it leak at all? And, you know, the guys are kind of careful how they respond, but just a little bit maybe. <laughs> but uh, it was, it was, it's fun uh, for him to get a, a chance to see this, but it's also very important because we continue to press uh, so that we have funding each year to do as much work as we can do each year. Um, you know, we want to try to get this done over the next, is it six years, guys? Is I don't want to overshoot here. Is it six or six or eight we're planning? The general was kind of fidgeting a little between six and six and a half years. So uh, they're starting now, and we hope they'll be done by 25. Right, and I think the general's going to touch on it, but coming over, you know, we talked about the inlet structure, the wild rice uh, control structure, the I-29 bridge raised the embankment. I think he'll get on that, but if we... You know, we've got the federal funding in place, and with the project account, we'll have the federal funding to do what's close to $200 million worth of work there, I think, uh, and that's federal money. And so we'll keep working, um, but I, I want folks to understand that the commitment from uh, General Seminite, as well as the really capable work of people like Colonel Calkins and his team, it's vital for this project, and we can't take it for granted. Um, they, they've been a big part of it, and his willingness to come out here and, you know, recommit himself to this project to see the progress is very, very important to us. That doesn't, that doesn't always happen, and we don't take it for granted. So, again, this is about, you know, um, moving forward and, and getting this thing done. He, General made an interesting comment to me as we were out there walking around here today. He said, you know, you get to see something started, you get to see something's finished, but it's not often you actually get to see something where it starts and it's constructed. Well, that's why we want to get this done a reasonable period of time so we all get a chance to see that happen. <clears throat> and, um, you know, that's that's what today is about, and uh, and we have to, to stay at it. But the only, and the last thing is, again, um, real credit uh, to everyone involved in this in, in coming up with a creative solution local, state, and federal. It takes all, all the team members to make it happen. So uh, with that, again, General Seminite, thanks for being here. We appreciate having you. <coughs> Excuse me, having you with us today. Well, Senator, thanks for those words. And Mayor, thanks again for having me in. I was very, very impressed when I came up here before. Uh, impressed with the magnitude of the project, impressed with the challenges, impressed with the devastation that a lot of your citizens have been through but probably more impressed with the um, collaborative atmosphere that both of these states have joined together, and I felt very well received back then. And although I've only been here a couple hours on the ground uh, so far today, uh, same kind of attitude, and I think uh, Fargo-Moorhead's a great place. Um, so listen, just a little bit about me. I'm from a town a lot smaller than this. Uh, I live on a small town that's uh, on the Connecticut River in Vermont. Uh, it has flooded several times. I'm very, very aware of what flooding's like in rural areas. I understand the devastation that happens. I understand a lot of times you don't have big businesses to be able to bail you back out. Uh, the other thing is, the senator said this, but uh, I like to get on the ground. I've been in this job for 35 months. Uh, I've been on the road for uh, 140 weeks in a row. So basically, I leave Washington, D.C. Monday night, I go somewhere Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I got to go back on the Hill to see uh, elected officials on Friday. And so I like to get out and see what's going on. And it's not so much, I get a lot of PowerPoint, a lot of great briefings. Everybody tells me what you know life looks like in Washington, DC, but I've always learned most of getting on the ground, talking to real people, real stakeholders, walk around and see things. Um, and so just as an example, when we flew in, we did a couple circles, we flew in a military plane, we could see the devastation, you know, miles and miles out of just all of those farm areas that have been flooded and much, much more outside of this given area. I was here a couple of years ago. Uh, the guys walked me through all the pictures. They, at the time, you did a great job of educating me on the, the devastation. But then we just came from uh, Second Street North, where the guys are down there working on that pump station. Uh, beautiful big, uh, the wall's all in. You've got the road that goes down there. 
Um, it, it, I can see in where there's great flood con control protection down there, but at the same time, there's some natural areas where people can walk around. In the middle of the summer, I'm sure it's nice to get out there and be able to walk around the river. And then we just barely were down on the top of the pump station. The senator and I were up on top of that pump station. You guys don't have a key to that gate or else you'd probably go up there because it's a great place to be able to look at both ways. It's right behind this building. And uh, we were there for about a half an hour. I got a little bit of briefing from our guys on what's going on. But just to be able to see the structure, to be able to see the drop logs, those are the big aluminum uh, panels that get uh, put in there. And, uh, and again, I saw what it was like two years ago. And uh, to be able to come back now and see where we're at, I think it's important. So that's great of where we've been. But I think what's more important is where we're going to go. Um, <clears throat> when I came in, this is a four-year job. I'm about at the end of my third year. I picked 20 projects that I thought were ones that needed my personal involvement and that had either national significance or such life safety issues that I needed to personally get involved. Uh, this project was one of those 20 projects. And it wasn't necessarily a very, uh, very complicated job with respect to science and engineering. We have a lot of superstars in the core. But it was probably very, very complicated in bringing two states together with all the, the center talked about the vertical team, local, state, national leaders, and then what's the funding strategy? How do we somehow figure out where we have shared successes or shared diversity on how this thing works out between the two states and, uh, and to be able to continue to be able to go down this road? And, and I think this project continues to be a model of what, uh, what some of the options are available. The federal government can't afford every single thing we have and all the things that are on our plate. So we've got to be able to look at innovative ways of doing something a little bit different. And I still look at this project as one of probably the most innovative flood control projects that we have in the entire nation. This is uh, out of the box and it's some pretty important stuff. So we got um, uh, some appropriation a while back. Uh, we would have liked to got more, to be honest with you. Uh, but right now, um, we have about $100 million, so we're going to continue to finish up uh, the Diversion Inlet, $46 million. We've turned that contractor back on. Uh, and then Wild Rice, we expect to award that contract by the end of September of 2019, so another four or five months. And that will go ahead and continue to work those two critical structures. Um, we will continue to champion this in the president's budget. I can't promise what comes out of the president's budget, but we see that once we start a project in the core, we'd like to see it through. And um, we haven't used the word system yet, but these are systems. You might be able to build a couple pieces, but when you talk flood control, if you don't have that entire system put in, then you have gaps and you have voids. And that's where it's great to put a couple pieces in, but I think that we as the federal government should stand by you to continue to see this thing through to completion. So that's where uh, Congress has been exceptionally beneficial to us. Normally, we get about a $5 billion budget in our, uh, our congressional appropriation. Congress comes in and normally augments that to the tune of about $2 billion. I'm not going to talk for Congress this year. They haven't finished up what that mark's going to be. But if, in fact, they're so inclined to be able to give us some additional money, then I'd like to think that we would come back in in what I would call logical increments. We want to be able to build some complete and usable part of a system. So the next logical one, Mayor, would be probably the uh, I-29 Brid and road, road, rage, uh, road raise. Um, that could be in the order of merit of uh, 62 million, something like that. Uh, we would champion to be able to put that into what we call the work plan. That is that delta from 5 billion to 2 billion. Uh, I've got to caution you, that still has to go through um, Army leadership and it has to go through OMB and it has to get um, appointed, uh, approved by the committee. But I just want to have, uh, make sure you know that from an engineering perspective, we would think that would be the next logical increment that would be a good value. And then I think the other thing is there's about 23 million that would be above and beyond that, which would be the West Embankment, to be able to start building on the west side, to be able to put some of that hardening in some of the channel, to be able to continue to go out there. On 2021 budget, we'll see what happens there. And I think if we continue to work through work plan, uh, we'll have to see on what, what happens. But uh, just knowing that you've got, I think, a champion for flood control, not politics, but flood control, uh, in Washington, D.C., with the 
technical expertise of the Corps, and, and it really is all of your staff as well. I mean, this is everybody working side by side to be able to come together to say, how can we do something to reduce the, the risk out there? So uh, I'm impressed with what we've done so far, but this is the kind of project, you don't do high fives until the last bricks in the ground, and we aren't there. So although some of these things look great, until we continue to get the system built, which is that six or seven year project, <laughs> then I think we don't want to rest on our laurels. Let's keep being as aggressive as we can to try to get all the funding you need to get this thing done. I'll stop there and uh, at some point, Sam, be able to take questions as need be, okay? Yes, sir, thank you. Um, I think I'd open it up to, to the rest of the people at the table. Would anyone uh, like to, to make any statements? Yeah, please, Dave. Can I ask a question? So you talked about the bid that would be going out this fall. Is that for the inlet? And then how long would that particular part take? So, um, Terry, do you want to hit that? So, I have, um, Dave, I have a great. Uh, Just have to hit the button. I have a great statement. So I say to everybody, I didn't get to be a general by being the smartest guy in the room. I got to be a general by finding really smart guys and putting them in a the room. Okay, so that's where I <laughs> lean on Terry. Can you answer Dave's question? What specifically is in the scope of work for the inlet, and then what would the wild rice structure entail? Yeah, so at the inlet, um, this summer, spring and summer, we would start seeing foundation work done. So deep soil mixing, pile load test, uh, H pile, uh, sheet pile being driven. Um, possibly start seeing some mass concrete being poured uh, late fall in the winter. And then uh, next summer or next construction season would be mass concrete um, in earnest. So you'd start seeing this structure come out of the ground and um, gates and machinery hung. Um, and then the following year would probably be uh, turf establishment. So there's also like uh, the, the maintenance bridge that goes over the top, that's a precast type thing. That'll, that'll be brought on site maybe next year. And, so um, the inlet um, could start seeing that come out of the ground pretty soon. And then the wild rice control structure, uh, we would bid that, put it out for proposals in May, and award a contract in September is the current schedule. Um, probably wouldn't see a lot of site work until the following spring. I think the good news, though, is we have the funds. So now we're going to go back into what's the logical way to be able to do this. The weather might have a factor out there. Um, we have been getting great support on contract uh, capability and quality. So I think we will continue to build this through a logical construction process. And we'll keep you in a loop on all of that, OK? General, I like the words you say, and I kind of like the way you think, because you're talking about money, you're talking about construction, you're starting moving forward. And what we especially had wanted to do with this, Senator Hoven and our congressional delegations, is move forward on a project and have the funding available, and we've talked about that in the past. But truly, this is starting. This is moving now, starting to get some movement and activity. And we think we're excited about it, because it's going to be innovative for the core. Core oftentimes takes 18 years to do a project. We're going to up this up and move it a little faster. And then the combination of all all us working here locally on the project, uh, Minnesota, North Dakota side, trying to get everything in place. The state is the last thing we have to do for funding. That's what we're working on right now. But the big part of our project is the core and the core work. So in general, I want to appreciate all you've done for it. I know you and Senator Hovind have worked hard in Washington to make this thing move forward. And uh, to the public, that takes a lot to move that big machinery up in, in the Washington area. So we're very pleased with this support, and I like the way you think right now. Thank you. Mayor, there's another critical thing that's happened here. And, uh, and I won't speak for the Congress, but I'll tell you, um, I think that Senator Hovind and I feel the same on this. It's one thing to be able to see continued appropriations for projects, but once we start a project, it's a big deal for Congress right now. The president, specifically in his budget, has, has given us guidance. Once we start something, let's see it through. And we don't have enough money as taxpayers to half build something. We gotta be able to see it. So the fact that you've got an appropriation, you've got a new start, and we're beginning to put concrete in the ground, I think that gives you a lot of momentum in future years to be able to make the case why would we have started something and not see it all the way through? So it, I think it's really a milestone here that, again, we might have been here a couple of years ago, but now that we're back here and we have the ability to be able to start that momentum and keep it going, I think it speaks very favorable for the project. Yeah, and I, I'd add to that, the general's right on, and that not only the administration and the Corps, but 
on, on Congress's side, so I'm on energy and water appropriations, uh, our chairman, myself, others, and it's not a very big committee, we have a real commitment to the projects that are underway so that we don't end up with these projects out there that are half done. And so, you know, as we look at the work for this year, you know, the, the items that the general talked about, the, the diversion inlet, the wild rice control structure, then the I-29 bridge raise, uh, getting that western embankment going, like I say, you know, we're about $200 million into the project in terms of the federal commitment. We're going to want to continue that out and, and you know, get it built, not sit with a half-finished project and then start somewhere else. So that's really important in terms of, uh, you know, having projects that are appropriated and, and having them continue. And we've, we've made that a priority in the committee. So the general's right on, and we'll continue to, to emphasize that, you know, as well. So that, that's a really important point. So when we put money in that, in the Corps' uh, work account, you know, that is an emphasis that you finish those projects that, that have already been appropriated. Anyone else have a question or a comment? Okay. Hey, Sam. So uh, sure. just the other thing, too. Um, I love the mayor, but we're going to be faster than 17 years. I'm not settling for this anymore. We've been around 243 years. I'm revolutionizing the core. I've told my guys we're going quicker. We're going to streamline. But the other thing we're going to do, we want to continue to be transparent. We want to be very open. Uh, I'd like to say that we don't make mistakes and we're right up front. But if there's ever a time somebody wants to come see the project, you want a briefing, you want my guys to come to you know your meetings. If you want to take a Boy Scout troop out and have them look at the project, we are part of your city. We're part of America. And so you keep pushing us hard. And whatever we can do to be exactly what you would expect of us, that's my charter to my 34,000 people to continue to keep raising the bar on the Corps of Engineers, okay? Well, I got to warn you, Mary, Shirley's sitting next to you, and she's getting a P3 contract bid. And I think her mantra was it has to be done one month before the Corps is done. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Some healthy competition there. Um, so, I, yeah, I'll say something. I, I would encourage anybody else who uh, might have a question to, to write that down so you don't forget it. But um, one, of the, one of the big questions on this project has always been uh, permitting. So w when we say permitting, most people think of Minnesota. But uh, I would ask you not to forget that North Dakota permits the project as well. So we've had very good relations with, with uh, the State Water Commission and others. Um, on the Minnesota side, that's, that's uh, where all the um, attention has been and of course uh, the governor's task force governor bergam and Gumber governor dayton worked very well together uh, got got teams together from uh, uh, people who are for the project he, people who are against the project and kind of and worked out uh, what has come to be known as plan b um, so just and everybody in the room i think uh, is, is well aware of that but just some of the latest on uh, where we are with the minnesota dnr uh, the dnr uh, uh, issued a permit for the project um, and that permit is, uh, has been contested or may be contested in uh, Minnesota State Court. Um, but, but despite that, the, you know, as I mentioned before, the judge in the federal case um, modified the injunction to let us get back to work. So a lot of people have some questions about what, what that means. And really, um, from our perspective, what that means is we're going to get back to work, but we're going to respect the Minnesota process, um, respect the, the people uh, upstream of the project who are going to be impacted by it, continue working closely with them. Um, and, and really, it's not me. Uh, again, the people at this table know it a whole lot better than I do. It's, uh, it's the, the local officials from the counties and the cities here who have been reaching out and working really hard with, uh, with the upstream um, uh, coalition, upstream uh, people who are affected by the project. Um, I personally and a lot of uh, people on the core team are continuing to work very closely with the Minnesota DNR. Um, so in no way should anybody think that we're just going to, you know, take the judge's ruling and, and kind of run with the project and uh, not, not consider the impacts on Minnesota. Uh, to the contrary, we're going to continue working very closely with them. In fact, one of the first uh, calls I made after we found out um, the positive ruling from uh, Judge Tumheim was over to the DNR uh, to reassure them that uh, we were going to keep operating uh, transparently, continuing to communicate with them clearly, answer their questions whenever they had them, and uh, work with them as a, a, a team member on this project. Because 
once this project gets built, it's going to operate for 50 years. I think uh, we generally build pretty good projects. Maybe that's 100 years. Um, and we have to have everybody who's involved with the project, everybody who's affected, um, buy into that project. And uh, really just want to make uh, uh, clear that we're committed to doing that, committed to continuing to work with all stakeholders uh, to include Minnesota and the Minnesota DNR. I'll just add to that that um, yeah, the diversion board and, and our technical team especially, they're all lined up back there, work uh, frequently, up, I don't, daily perhaps with the DNR, working on all of these issues. It's, it's not like you get a driver's license and away you go, um, both with Minnesota and North Dakota. It's, 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 a, it's implemented throughout the project, and we will continue to work closely with both North Dakota and Minnesota throughout the permitting process, and, and we have done that and will continue to do so. Um, on the North Dakota side, another part of the project that we've started is land acquisition. We've started that in earnest, uh, especially in, in the channel portion of the project so that we can get that land acquired uh, ahead of the P3 start. And so our goal is to get that land acquired uh, by next spring, a year from now. And, um, and also, we have we've been visiting with folks that would like to move sooner than that that are perhaps in the retention area. We've also been visiting with landowners uh, re regarding flowage easements in the retention area as well. So um, that, that's a big part of this project. Uh, you know, not everybody is happy about this project if they're negatively affected. And we want to try to make this as easy for people as possible. We never lose sight of that. And um, we're constantly reaching out to people if, if anyone feels that they need more information from us or they should be contacted and, and we haven't. Um, the project has been modified over the years, so sometimes you might have been affected and, and now you're not. Um, so I really encourage people to, to contact us, go to our website uh, and, and look at, at the maps. But, um, but we're excited to get moving forward on, on that process as well. There's been several people that have been held in limbo for several years that really wanted to get um, their, their land acquired, and so we've been happy to be able to do that in the last few months. Thank you. And anyone else? Kevin. Yeah, I, I want to um, touch base a little bit on, on, on the Minnesota side. I know Commissioner Sherling's talked about the area, for example, in the northwest part of the, of the county that experienced trouble in this last flooding. And, and in some of our rural areas, um, Georgetown and Comstock and Wolverton have also uh, experienced some, some issues with, with flooding. And, and I think it's, uh, you know, we've made it clear that, that as part of this project and part of regional flood protection, we want to work with those communities as well. Uh, and a lot of it, uh, uh, we'll hopeful that'll be part of this project, uh, the work in Georgetown, the work in Wolverton. And I, you know, so I, I, I look forward to that continued communication. Uh, I know that uh, in, you were talking, Colonel, about the uh, DNR permit and that permit itself had several conditions and our intentions are to meet all those all those conditions and and one of the conditions was uh, working with you know the city of Wolverton you know on, on issues affecting them so so I look forward to that dialogue moving forward and and we certainly look for your your help in that regard to uh, help move that process forward and again thank you general for being here and and I'm Really glad to hear uh, your timeline is is good. So thank you. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Okay. We don't have to be here till three forty-five. I, I will say though uh -huh. that the uh, the Corps of Engineers contingent will be here uh, probably till about uh, four o'clock. So if anybody has uh, uh, personal questions that you want to ask, uh, please feel free to approach any of us, and then. I will um, give everybody at the at, at the head of the table here a chance to make any uh, closing comments. It looks like Mayor. Well, Bobby. maybe you could have a press conference afterwards, ten minutes after we adjourn. Maybe if people have questions, we could have you guys over at the stairs. So the general and senator, if anybody had any questions sure. for the press, we could probably do that. <clears throat> Sounds good. All right, Senator Hogan, any closing? 
remarks? Well, just again, thanks. I mean, I, every time the head of the Corps of Engineers, I mean, Colonel, we love seeing you too. Don't get me wrong. You're fabulous, and your team's fabulous. So don't, you know, don't feel underappreciated. Thanks, but last I checked, the uh, um, you know chief of staff for the Corps of Engineers, he, there's a lot of places he has to be all over this country. So every time he comes out here and makes this an area of emphasis, it it uh, it speaks very loudly. And uh, we are deeply appreciative. Thank you for all your work. Well, Senator, to you and the mayor and just all everybody, I just reiterate, whatever we can do, we're all in. And uh, uh, I'm not convinced you need a lot of help up here in North Dakota. Probably the biggest where you need help is the senator and I to help you down in D.C. And as long as we can keep the money coming, I think you've got enough smart people up here to put it in the ground, okay? Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks again to the Division 30 and the City of Fargo for hosting us, and uh, we'll have a, a, a press availability at 3.40. Can we just do a round of applause because the general doesn't come? May have. Uh, I'll just preface it by saying we're very pleased to have General Semonite here. Uh, he is the commanding general for the Corps of Engineers. So having him come out here, uh, again, is, is extremely important. It shows his commitment to this project. And, of course, what we're talking about now is moving forward with uh, construction. We're very pleased that... Um, that the diversion authority has been able to get the approval uh, in terms of um, the judge and uh, uh, Minnesota so that the construction in North Dakota can proceed. Uh, there are four or five different uh, portions of the project that I think the general will talk about um, that uh, we want to get underway. A couple of them um, already uh, funded, one already bid, it's just restarting construction uh, on uh, the uh, inlet, uh, but on the, the uh, number of the others, it's, it's about moving forward, getting them bid and getting them constructed. If this goes as we have planned general, it'd be about $200 million in terms of federal uh, construction, which would be underway this year or getting underway. Um, and our commitment is to continue to work uh, to uh, keep the project going in, until we get it done. And I think the Mayor and, and uh, Commissioner Schirling have said six years is the, is the goal. And so that's what uh, we're looking at, at doing. Um, and I, I feel like uh, this has just been a real collaborative project. There's been a, there are a lot of challenges that we have overcome, and there are more challenges to overcome, but this is a local, state, federal partnership it is Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo, Cass County, Clay County, the region working together. And this is about comprehensive flood protection for the region. So we have to stay at it and get it done. Even this year, you can see because of all the incredible improvements that have been made, there's a lot of areas that are now protected that you almost already are taking for granted. But we're going to go out and look at some more of the area. We, we've looked at some of it that's underwater right now because the full project has not been constructed. And that's why we need to keep pressing forward until we get this thing done. Uh, and of course, that's exactly what we're doing. So again, uh, big thank you to General Semonite uh, and um, you know, his commitment to the project. That, that's vitally important. This doesn't happen, happen without him and his great team. So General, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks, Senator. I just echo everything the Senator said. Uh, we're working all over the world, and when I look at this project, the potential here to continue to collaborate, continue to be made to do amazing things to protect uh, not only the property but the lives of the people of this critical area. Uh, it's very, very important. I was here two years ago, and uh, you convinced me of the utility of this project. Uh, we continue to champion this, not just from an engineering perspective, but to be work very, very closely with Congress. Senator Hoven has been a champion here to be able to make sure we can articulate to Congress the value of this so when Congress has to make hard decisions on where money should go, this is one of those that clearly should be at the top of the list. As the Senator said, we've got about $100 million already appropriated, so we are going to continue to, uh, to, to finish out the division inlet. That's fully funded. We'll work on that in the next couple of years. Uh, the wild rice structures and the other one we're going to start, we'll have that awarded by the end of September 2019. And then the other big things is that uh, as we continue to be able to let Congress know where there are definable increments of work we can do, uh, Congress does give us additional appropriations in many, many of the years. If the Congress uh, does decide to give us additional in what we call the FY20 work plan, 
then we would continue to be able to advocate for the I-29 bridge and road raise project to be able to get those done. That's about $62 million. And then also to be able to start on the West Embankment. We think those are very, very definable projects that would continue to incrementally get this done. Uh, but as I look at through not just the concrete and the steel on this, but it's much more about uh, everybody working side by side. Uh, the commissioner has been phenomenal. Mayor, you've got a great team up here, everything that you've done. And again, it goes to both of the great governors. They've come together and have done some outstanding things. And I look at this project also from the potential to be able to help introduce perhaps some other ways that we can fund some of these innovative infrastructure projects. We have too, many, too much backlog in America to be able to have the federal government carry all the load. So we can, we can think about how do we share that load through either local, state, federal, or perhaps private industries, this is a project that I think has amazing potential. So the Corps will continue to stand by you. And Mayor, I just want to tell you that we're very proud to be on your team. Thank you. I'll just add that um, the North Dakota legislature is, is wrapping up business in the, in the next few days. And, and you can see the federal commitment to this project. And one of the reasons I've been told uh, the federal uh, government feels that this is a, is a a worthy project, not only because it's needed, but because the local taxpayers have chosen to tax themselves uh, half of half of the, the cost of this project to get it done. So, I mean, that's phenomenal. It's it shows how important it is to us to to get permanent flood protection for our citizens, and um, it, we're. We're excited uh, to move forward, but we need to have the state of North Dakota's support with this project as well. Uh, we've, um, we've been working diligently to give them the information they need, and, and we hope that they can fund us to the level that we've requested so that we can move forward in a timely manner. So uh, with that, we're excited to get moving on, on the project that we had to halt for a short period of time, but uh, hopefully in another six years, we'll be able to cut a ribbon. Thanks. Mayor, jump in. Well, General Salmon, I'm very pleased that two years ago you came here, saw our project, and saw the progress that we needed to make. And firmly, if people wonder, is the federal government in this? You are in this. This is one of your top 20 projects in the United States. The other issue is, is that we talked about innovation, and we truly think this is an innovative project. This is the one project, when you look at the core sometimes and say, why does it take so long? This is one project in which you're pushed to put the down, pedal to the metal to try to get this one done on time. And we really feel that we can move forward on this. And the state sometimes is asked is, are you guys committed? And there's no question in today's meeting, you are committed. So we will work with that. Senator Hoven and the congressional delegation is going to work with us, get the money from the feds, and we're going to move forward on this project. So this is a great day for the Diversion Authority. Uh, when the general comes into the town and says stuff, things happen. And uh, he wanted to compliment our engineers. Nathan, when he went down there and looked at our flood wall, we, we didn't leak. So we're happy to see that. And Jason, you can show him the county out there and see where you are leaking, because you have a lot of roads that are underwater, and it's a really a mess out there. And good God, when we get this done, you're going to have a lot better flood fight. Thank you. You'll be glad to know he climbed all over the downtown part. And I'm sure he'll climb all over the southern end as soon as we get down there. Well, I think, first of all, um, I was telling the senator, it, it's sometimes uh, odd or rare that you get to both see the beginning of a project and the end of a project. And while we have a long way to go here, two years ago, there was a lot of mud. We had just finished a you know, significant flood event, and we were down there in that pump station, and I couldn't understand necessarily how the whole thing would come together. At that time, this building was not built. You got a brand new condominium, it looks like, going up, uh, on the side of it. Uh, you know, the, the road was all closed off. Traffic, Second Street had been moved back. And, uh, and to see all of that activity down there and where people now can reside knowing that they can invest in that property, whether it's business or residential, without having to worry about flood damage, uh, where people can go on the front side and have recreation advantages on the front side of that trail. I think that's just indicative of you know, the quality of life that the people of this region deserve. 
And that's what this flood control does. It's clearly got to be able to take care of safety and the, and the property of life, uh, property and, and damage. But at the end of the day, you know, our citizens uh, deserve to live in a place where they don't have to fear for their life every single dime. And if they end up putting an investment in, they'd like to think that's protected. So I see great value of what's done. The quality of the construction is phenomenal. And, uh, and, and this is where I really get the, uh, I get the impression that everybody here is all in. It's, it's a, a total vertical team, and uh, we're just proud to be part of the team. So we have, uh, we're doing uh, about $46 billion this year. That's a big, big lift for us. Uh, on the other hand, we have very, very specific guidance from Congress as to where those projects should fall. And then those are all in different type of business lines. There's clearly flood control projects, there's navigation projects, there's ecosystem restoration. And then our job is to basically be able to study a given requirement to be able to identify the value of the investment and then to recommend to Congress. Congress makes a decision on those, but we have to be able to figure out what's those projects that are the best value to the nation to be able to invest in. A lot of times that goes back to what are the benefits, what are the costs. Uh, I personally put a very, very high premium on life safety. I look at you know the ability to be able to protect life, to be able to protect investment. So flood control is obviously very, very high. And this region alone, what you went through and you know several years ago what you continue to see when we flew in today there's a lot of fields on the outside of town that are continuing to be flooded so this is where this thing i think rose to a point where not only was it something that you needed to, something larger than just the local solution the local solution couldn't have solved it here the federal government had to be able to partner with stake and locals and uh, that's where i saw the potential of being able to do this in a little bit different way to me meant that this was really important and that's why i'm here today is to just be able to continue to be able to be visible to be transparent but also to help carry back to D.C. to champion this project wherever I can so Congress is, then has the best available information they need you to make those funding decisions. Anybody else? If you have? Sure. Well, yeah. So it's called WIFI. It's just a loan guarantee. Actually, EPA already does it, and the intent was the, for the Corps to have a similar program. So what I did is I included in the energy and water bill uh, last year uh, $6 million and a directive that the Corps of Engineers stand up a uh, loan guarantee program similar to what EPA does. And essentially the way it would work is it would provide a guarantee then for a project. So the idea is not for the federal share. So the federal sh share we just appropriate like we've talked about today. That's the $200 billion we talked about. We'll continue to appropriate that to the core and then the, the core does the work. But the idea is that for the state and local share, if we could help them bond that, then that would hopefully reduce their cost over time. And so that's the idea. If we can get the WIFIA program stood up, then that would help reduce that um, state and local cost share, or in essence make their dollars go further because we'd be able to provide them with a federal guarantee. So that's what we're working on. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Kevin? Yep. And the beauty of the WIF here is we don't pay till it's project is done. So if we build six and a half years, you're not paying on that. So on our bonds, uh, the financial bonding, we need John Shockley could probably tell you how all that works, but uh, when we do that, it's a tremendous savings for us on the bond cost. And and I actually had talked to the Corps about using EPA's program. The Corps came back to me and said, no, 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 we want our own. And I said, fine, then, then set one up. Well, we don't have the money to do it, so I, I gave them the $6 million to set it up and the directive to do it. So ho hopefully that will happen, um, it, but it's going to take, you know, they have to set up the program and, and so forth. But that's what we're working on. Well, I'm excited when our partner's excited about a project because that means we're both committed to get this thing done. And uh, Bruce Grubb and I looked at the flood forecast when this started out. We could have been at 41 feet, 
and that would be a tremendous flood flight for this community. So to have our project done and could, it could sustain a 100-year flood or could sustain a 500-year flood event, that's tremendous. And the more quicker we get it built, and as we know, we finally got a flood, 209, it's uh, 219 coming, you know, we're gonna have some more wet events. And the way the weather's been lately, it's kind of crazy what next spring will bring in the spring after. So part of the reason the general and I are talking about a six-year build is hopefully to have it built before we have another major flood. Second, second year, you had your flood wall up and you got water on it. It's that's, only the second year you had so That's it. right. So that's why we're enthusiastic about, you know, it's, it's hard when things hold you back, but when you can finally go forward and say to the public, this thing is going, it really is very helpful to all of us. And what we're getting out there, and Mary can verify that too, is that the people, the landowners, the homes, the people that are affected are saying, Let's, are you going to get it done or not? And they're thankful that we're going to get it done because then they can get some definitive ideas of what's going to go on. And it's a matter of, well, how does this affect me and what do I need to do? And I think you're getting some relief out there. Some of your township meetings have gone well, where people said, I didn't realize this is how you're going to treat me. You are treating me fair. And people say, I just, you know, some people got to move off the farm. Some people want to do stuff with their kids. There's a variety of different things. So when we get a definition that we're moving forward and we're in the project and we're in the start, we have gone through all the steps that we should be moving forward. So just like, hooray, there's one of those things that we could jump up and down and say, boy, finally, we're starting to move forward. Did you want to comment on that? Yes, we've been actively um, engaged with landowners since the, the beginning of the year, especially in the channel portion of the project. and. Uh, a lot of those folks have been held in limbo for, for the last couple of years and wanting to move forward, and, and so this has really been a, a blessing for them to be able to do that. And we've also been talking to folks that are in the impacted areas south of the, um, the dam, if you will, and uh, we can certainly uh, visit with them if they, if they want to have a land acquisition now or if they want to wait. Uh, the beauty of this project, if you're not ready for a couple more years or five years or whatever it might be, then you know we can make that adjustment for you if you live in certain areas that are affected by the, by the project. But the bottom line, we want to make sure that people feel like they're treated fairly and, and we want to be as flexible as we possibly can. So uh, we've, we've been out visiting with a lot of folks. We were in Rich Richland uh, County last week and uh, pretty much every week you'll see us somewhere, but you can go to our website and get all the details and more detailed maps on, and how, how you might be affected. Okay, got it. Thanks for being here. All right, thanks guys.